Hey everybody, I wanted to give you a quick uh, walkthrough of the interface of Premiere Pro CS5 on the program and source monitors. There's a lot of buttons there that can be a little bit intimidating looking, but once you see how they're used, you'll quickly, easily figure out how you could use this in your timelines and your projects very handy and save you a lot of time and effort, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Over here I have a program monitor and a source monitor. So my program monitor on the right, my source monitor on the left, okay? so. The difference between them is the source monitor basically is just video that you've got in your project imported in. You want to just show the video but not put it on your timeline yet and edit it here if you want to do so. Some people do that, some don't. I prefer to do it that way. I like to bring my video into the source monitor, do all my little edits using these tools down here, and then insert it into my timeline. And there's a number of different ways you can do that. We'll briefly go through. Okay, so that's all the source monitor is. It allows you to look at the video without having to put it on the timeline and do editing on the timeline, which I don't recommend. Do your editing in a like a, like a sketch pad effectively. That's what the source monitor is for. It allows you to do some sketching, and if you make some mistakes, it isn't on your final timeline, so you go back through and you can touch it up. Make it look professional the way you like it, then bring it into your timeline. The program monitor is just what I said it was. It is the timeline video as you have it. You can see I have a number of clips into my timeline here, and that's showing up on my program monitor on the right. Okay, so just to start, on the time code, you have this orange time code down here. All this time code is is where the controller is, or the current time indicator, in this particular clip, which is out of my imported projects over here on the left. Okay. So all I need to do is if I use this, I can scroll through by using the arrow key. You see it turns into a, a double pointer on the right of the fingers. You can drag it left and right if you wish. Okay? That's all that is. And this is this over here on the right is how long the clip is entirely. 37 seconds and two frames. All right. Let's go down to the drop-down box. This is just a screen. Uh, size you can adjust this and you want to use smaller sizes like 50% if you're using different text uh, or effects that have motion path you can see the motion path outside of the frame doesn't affect the output of the video here it'll still look hundred percent on the video it's just that's uh, you can use this for motion path editing but we're not gonna get to that in this video but I just wanted to show it to you so you can go all the way up to 400% I prefer to use just fit fits in there nicely all right this film strip and this little uh, sound icon, you can come up here and do all your editing in here, and then if you just want to bring video in, you can see my little hand go over the film clip. If I click drag and drop here, you see that all it did was just drop video. It didn't drop audio in there. That's what's really handy about that. You can just drag audio if you want into this timeline and drop it in there. There it is just the audio. So that's what those are for, just dragging in audio or just video, okay? Now we have the in and out points. In and out points are handy because when you're in your source monitor and you get to a point where, hey, this is where I want to start the video, this is what this I want this clip to start at. You click the in point or I on your keyboard and you can see it leaves a shaded area here. All this is going to play in your clip, but you can see to the left here, this non-shaded area, that's not gonna play. It doesn't ruin the video. The actual video is still fine. You have no problems. That's a non-destructive -linear, non linear editing system, which means it doesn't harm your actual video. It just makes the changes dig digitally. Now, you're going to want an in and an out point most likely. Not always, but sometimes. And I want to put my in point and out point right there. There's my out point I wanted at this place. I just click the O or the out point set. And you can see it just shades in the area. Now this is the only area that I want to play. Now I can then just click on the video in the source monitor and drag it to my timeline just like that if I wanted to. And then you can see the audio and video show up. Or I could do what I said before and that's to drag in just the video or just the audio. That's in and out points. An in and out point starts at a certain point and ends at a certain point. And you'll do a lot of in and out points on all your clips. And then once you've got them perfect, you take them to the timeline and put them in order. Okay? Now, you can, to the right of that, you can make clip markers. So markers on your timeline, you say, I want to have a clip marker here. You push the asterisk key or you can click this button here. And it puts a clip on your timeline. And if I put this into my... Uh, editor here you can see that it does add this clip 
Let me extend this out just a bit. You can see there is my clip marker right there. It's up here as well. I put this into this timeline, but I'll remove that. And you can use clip markers in that way. You can, you can put them into your timeline on your clips to remind you to do certain things. That's all a clip marker's for. Okay, this button down here is the go to endpoint. Remember, I set an endpoint on my timeline and I want to, uh, on my source monitor and I want to go to the first frame. I just click this Q on your keyboard or this button will take you to the first frame. If you want to go to the out point, the next one is go to out point and that's W. Click on it, it'll take you to the last frame in your out point. And of course, this button here, which is uh, play in to out, allows you to click this button. It starts at the end point and goes to the out and stops, plays it. See, look at this. It plays it, plays it, stops perfectly for you. It's awesome. Okay, so you have the, the next button up here is the go to previous marker. Obviously, it takes you to the previous marker. Jump over and go to this one, and guess where it's going to take you to? The next marker. So if you have a bunch of markers on your clips, you can use this to go to certain points in your timeline and uh, it's very handy especially if you're using this for synchronization of video and audio together so you can use those clips that way and you can use the markers all right we'll go back to this step back left that is a frame by frame reverse so if I click this I'm rewinding the video frame by frame you can see in the little orange indicator over here is going back frame by frame four three two one zero back to the frame just keeps going jump over the play button and you have just the same thing but going forward frame by frame forward one frame at a time all right so it's pretty easy stuff and you can use this front frame it's a little daunting to do one frame at a time so what I like to do is I'll get to the certain area I want to be at and just get as close as possible then I use my frame by frame okay then the next one is the play button obviously this is pretty easy push it plays stop stops pretty easy all right here's the shuttle the shuttle control is a really handy tool that allows you to just kind of really jog it left and right it's not the jog so down here is the jog but this is the shuttle you can go frame by frame but a little bit more quickly and then you can use these separate ones uh, up here the jog shuttles uh, a little more granular than the than the uh, the shuttle key is you just basically can move it left and right as you see fit like this and then you can use your single editing frame by frame okay I'm gonna go and do a part two here in just a moment and I'll cut this video here and please feel free to leave comments on where we're at part two's coming I'll cover these other buttons here and then kind of give some tips and tricks and we'll finish it up in part two okay thanks everybody see you in part two